Hi everyone, welcome to Ben's Tech Tips. Today we're going to look at how to adjust pinion bearing preload on a differential. A pinion bearing preload is the amount of friction when we turn the pinion shaft and we measure that with a inch pound torque wrench. You'll see us starting here with a differential that's already apart. We're going to be installing the crush lead and we're going to apply a little bit of lubricant onto the pinion bearings here. In this case we'll use lubricant plate. It just gives you a, a little bit of a pre-lubrication on the bearing when we uh, first install it to ensure that it's not going to run dry. And it's also going to allow us to measure the accurate friction between those bearing surfaces, the race and the rollers. Now we're going to install the pinion shaft and the bearings back into the carrier. And I'm going to lubricate the outer bearing. and install it back into the race. I'm going to put a little bit on the raceway as well. Now to seat this, we'll have to tap that bearing in with a brass punch, just a little bit of uh, resistance as it moves in. So I'm going to have a friend of mine hold the pinion gear from the other side. He's going to apply a little pressure on it. He's going to use the back end of a hammer to support it. And I'll tap it in with a brass punch around the perimeter of it. And I'll stay on the inner raceway. I don't want to, I don't want to damage the cage when I do this. Okay, and as it seats, I'm going to have enough clearance now that I can put my seal around. I'm going to lubricate the inner rubber area of the seal. And I'll tap the seal in carefully around the perimeter. You can use a, either use a driver or you can use a hammer gently around the perimeter. Tap it in now until it goes flush with the housing itself. And I'll also apply a little bit of lubricant on the yoke flange where it enters into the seal. And I'll gently tap that in. I'm going to put the washer and the pinion nut back on. Now we'll tap this with a rubber mallet to give that yoke a little bit more depth. And in this case, we're going to use an impact wrench on the low setting. We'll put it on one or two just to take up some of the plate. Our goal isn't to actually crush the crush lead in this case. We're just going to take the play up so we can carry on with the torque wrench and a holding tool. I'm not getting the play back in there. I want to feel the play. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, you can still see that the uh, yoke is plunging a little bit. That means there, we still have some extra play left between the bearing and the race. So we're going to put a holding tool on that pinion yoke there. I'm going to let it rest up, in this case, against a table because we're doing this as a, as a bench demonstration. In a car you would place that tool up against something solid so it couldn't rotate. Many times I just use my, my stomach as I pull on the torque wrench. You must find a specification for the minimum torque value on the pinion nut. In this case, for this particular model, it's 160 foot-pounds. Some might be higher, some might be lower. And I'm going to tighten that pinion nut up until I can hear it click. Now, you must remember, this is a minimum torque value required. So if you torque this to 160 and then you check the preload, the running friction on that pinion, and you found that the force to turn the yoke is actually higher, that means that your crush leave is over crushed and must be replaced and you start over. In this case, we're checking it with a pinion, uh, checking for pinion preload with an H pound torque wrench. It's a little low yet. So we're going to re-support the yoke, the holding tool. We're going to increase the torque value by about 10 foot-pounds. And we're going to recheck the frictional value to turn the yoke. In this case, we can still go up a little bit higher. So I'm going to add a little bit more torque to it. 
pull the holding tool off and once more check the rotating friction on it. Once I feel I'm close enough, we're going to take the inch-pound torque wrench and then check the friction. Now when you're checking pinion bearing preload, it's important not to check it when you're braking torque, but you actually have to be in motion and carefully read the torque value on this. In this case, we're about 10 inch pounds, that's desirable. And you can get a little bit better view of it as we look a little closer here. There's your 10 inch pound showing up on the gauge. And that's set. In this particular differential, it's recommended that we have 10 to 15 inch pounds on used bearings, which is ideal. So we're right in the ballpark. And that's how you adjust pinion bearing preload.